A third lesson we can learn from the uh, experience of Hijrah, and that is uh, uh, when it comes to getting the job done, proficiency comes before piety. And it is said that the Prophet ﷺ, just to explain what that really means, the Prophet ﷺ wanted to take a different route to Medina. And again, going back to our discussion on tawakkul, that was yet another method the Prophet ﷺ used in order to make sure that the, the, the trip stays as a secret. So he wanted to go through that other uh, uncharted route, you know, a, a, a route that was never used by people, you know, to go to uh, the city of Medina. Uh, but he was worried that he might actually get lost in the desert. So subhanAllah, he hires uh, an extremely professional uh, 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 person from Mecca who was a guide basically, and his name was Abdullah ibn Urayqat. And Abdullah ibn Urayqat was not a Muslim at the time. What the Prophet did was that he wanted the best. He, he did not want to take any chances. He did not say, I should hire a Muslim brother uh, to do the job for me. He decided to hire Abdullah ibn Uraiqat because he was the best. So the, the Prophet ﷺ did his research and he realized that Abdullah was the best in this field and he hired him and he paid him later. Now Abdullah later on became a Muslim, but that is not the point. The point here is that uh, in, in, uh, in our... Uh, 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 masajid uh, uh, in, in the process of our activism, you know, trying to start projects, trying to construct you know buildings and things for our community. Even at the level of, of the family and the individual, we're always confronted with this difficult question. We, we have a job and we want this job to be done. So should we hire the Muslim brother who's not really that good, or hire the non-Muslim business who is really really good? And oftentimes we ha we give preference to our Muslim brothers and sisters, and, and you know this is understandable. But based on this lesson from the Prophet's life, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, sometimes I feel that we really uh, do injustice to our Muslim brothers and sisters, you know, the Muslim-owned businesses, when we bail them out this way. We accept their, their, them with their weaknesses, with their lack of proficiency. We accept them with, with, with a lack of cordial attitude, with a lack of congeniality. We accept them with, with sometimes, you know, their, their harsh behavior, sometimes they're a little bit rude because they take the business for granted, because they, they don't feel the heat of competition, because they know that will always come to them. And subhanAllah, brothers and sisters, wallahi, I feel that we do injustice to Muslim-owned businesses when we bail them out. If you make a decision, just like the Prophet did, you make a decision to hire the most proficient, now, the Muslim-owned businesses would feel the heat and they would try to improve, they would try to better their ways and to match up to, to the competitor and, and that would, would make their businesses longer lasting and would make them more competitive and they will make more money and, and, and survive and, 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 and become wealthier and alhamdulillah contribute to the community. So you, you have done them justice actually when you uh, 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 not bail them out and, and choose the other person who is not Muslim. So the matter of piety here should not be used as a criterion when it comes to getting professional jobs done and that is what we learn from the character of the Prophet